realize we did not have audio for that beginning, so I'm going to really quick go over that again. From 9.30 to 5, we're open six days a week, so that's Monday through Saturday. And on Sundays, we're open 1 to 5. All right, so we're back to our normal live streams, so the prehistoric animal ones. And we're going to continue on with whales. So today, we are talking about bacillosaurid whales. You can zoom in on the drawing a little bit. There's the little thing on the camera. Oh, wait. Yep. So bacillosaurid whales are one of the earliest groups of whales to get truly large, up until to just about 33.9. They're in the class Mammalia, the order Artiodactyla, the infraorder Cetacea, but then the family Bacillosauridae. So their modern relatives are sort of distantly stuff like antelope, other hooved animals like hippos and giraffes. And closer are the modern whales and dolphins. And they, the fossils of these are found in areas that uh, are now the Sahara Desert, but they met very likely this group of whales lived almost globally. And they tended to be, from what we can tell, upper water column or pelagic animals. Now, when they, these whales' skulls were first found, they have very odd, um, sort of dentition and skull shapes when you're looking at them in the context of mammals, they were actually mistaken for large aquatic reptiles, which is why it has the name Bacillosaurus. Uh, that suffix saurus means a lizard in Latin. I don't know why they haven't tried to rename them yet. Maybe it's sort of just stuck in everyone's mind a bit and it's easy to remember. Um, but yeah, so these would have been large carnivorous animals. Uh, they would have eaten uh, large fish. Other smaller whales are actually something that we have reasonable evidence from the fossils of these other whales, like Duradon, that have bite marks that really only could have come from a bacillosaurid whale. And these things were roughly 50 to 60 feet long and could have weighed as much as 60 tons, which made them the largest animal on Earth at the time, probably. Uh, but some weird features about these whales is they still weren't quite the whales that you and I picture today. So they had hind legs still. If you want to zoom in more closely on this drawing, they were reduced, but they were still there. And another thing about them is that, <laughs> we have the Dutch angle on this now, um, is that their forelimbs actually still had elbow joints. Modern whales do not have elbow joints in their front flippers. They also had a very different body shape, generally. We can probably zoom back out. They had a very different body shape than modern whales. They have almost been described, I think, at times as eel-like in their body. They were very long and thin, comparatively. Uh, these whales would have been hairless, though. We have decent evidence to show they are hairless. Uh, modern whales and dolphins have no body hair and very smooth skin. No, they are technically mammals still. <laughs> um, which, um, which allows them to be more hydrodynamic, that smooth, hairless skin. Now, these whales did have what we generally can call binocular vision, so good forward-facing eyes. Um... But there were a couple things that are kind of weird about them, other than the back legs and the elbow joints. They actually didn't have a blowhole. They still had two distinct nostrils, which were roughly on the top of their head. So moving closer into that you know, familiar form that we're used to. But another thing that they lacked is what's called a melon organ. If you've ever seen a beluga, a sperm whale, a dolphin, or most living whales, uh, their foreheads are very round, and actually, they have this very, this soft organ in front of their kind of forehead called a melon, which helps with hearing and detecting sound underwater. Uh, these whales did not have that. Whales at the time generally did not have melon organs. Um, so it's reasonable to assume these whales could not do the sonar echolocation that some modern, many modern whales can. Uh, which oftentimes gets them labeled as very primitive organisms. Uh, these whales uh, were quite dependent on the ocean being a very specific way, with the large prey available to them. 
Uh, in the Eocene, there was, at the end, right at the end of the Eocene, at the beginning of the Oligocene, there was a shift in ocean temperatures that shifted the ecological sort of trends, and these whales went extinct around that time. Uh, leaving behind no modern descendants, uh, this group of whales uh, fully disappeared from the face of the Earth. Uh, the next group of whales we are going to talk about actually do have living representatives. Um, but yeah, so these whales, I am not super familiar with these from my childhood. They weren't really in a lot of media. Um, they weren't in a lot of paleo art. Um, but generally, I find them quite interesting. Uh, the way I've drawn this whale, I did a kind of an orca-ish color pattern, given that orcas also tend to hunt other large sea life, and even other members of the whales, porpoises, and dolphin, you know, group of animals. Um, it felt kind of right to give that color scheme to this animal as well. Uh, do you have any questions about these, by any chance? No? Um, but yeah, so uh, we'll be doing another live stream covering the next group of whales. Um, we have two more whale live streams, and then we're going to switch to a new different group of animal. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and it looks like the weather's getting a lot better outside, so hopefully this 